All right, you guys, all of you, for my stories at least, I... You know, this week I was just going to cover a single Idaho 4 case, but I happened to come upon something very interesting. So I changed it around. I'm, I'm doing two of them again like I did last week, which I normally don't do two weeks in a row. Um, but uh, we'll do like an Idaho 4 sandwich where I do a case and then a different case and then you know, the second Idaho four case, but anyway, so, uh, crazy video here. Okay. At least I think it is because it supports some of the major questions that we've had the whole time when it comes to this. Um, so we're going to watch that and then we are going to talk through, uh, what it means and everything in between, in my opinion, because, you know, What's it? What it's in reference to is the car, Brian Koberger's car. One of the very first pictures I ever saw when I was looking into this case was the car of the gas station. Okay, yeah. The one that said, sure. like, ha half the people who watch us say, it's fake. If you zoom in, you can see that it's been altered and adulterated and everything else. Um, then you have the other half the people that are like, duh, it, it makes perfect sense. Let me show you exactly where he drove and exactly why he would be right in that area well, mainstream, right at that time. You mainstream know what I mean? media believes that it's definitely real. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well... Let's watch this and then we will go from there, okay? News Nation getting more reports about the murders of four Idaho college students. A former medical examiner believes the toxicology reports in this case could help solve this murder. This coming after the coroner assigned to the case called the tests irrelevant to the horrific killings. A police officer's body cam also picked up a loud sound that could have been a scream around the time of the murders. Also, a convicted killer on death row believes the killer was waiting inside of the house before the savage stabbing spree. We want to bring in now former FBI agent Tracy Walder for her insight into these reports. Tracy, thank you so much for being back. Thank you for having me, Natasha. And, and first, what do you make of the San Quentin death row inmate giving an interview saying that he believes the killer was already waiting inside of the house? Does this theory have any merit? I don't want to say that it doesn't necessarily, because the reality is, is we still have no answers and we still have no suspects. And so what I do think is interesting and what I do think lends a lot of credibility and, and interest to this, this perspective is the fact that he is a criminal and he is inside the mind of a criminal. A lot of times, you know, we rely on profilers and things of that nature who are not necessarily, you know, of deviant mind and, and involved in these kinds of activities. And so I do think that his theory has merit, but obviously I, I, I certainly cannot say um, if it's fully credible or not. Now, I do think um, it could possibly explain um, how the person perhaps knew the house so well if they hadn't been to the house before. Um, but then I think it really, in a weird way, casts a wider net um, in terms of suspects and that perhaps this isn't someone who's in either an immediate or sort of periphery friend circle of, of the individuals. And I think that in and of itself is scary. Um, the only reason I'm a little hesitant um, to, to fully um, embrace his theory is that the police, the one consistent thing they have done is, is they've pretty been, been pretty consistent in discussing the fact that this is a targeted, um, killing, which tells me it's probably less likely that that, uh, person that was unknown to them was, was laying in wait. I appreciate that. And, and I know that you're also tracking this issue. There was CCTV footage, but it was lost after a week, 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 but it was lost after a week. What happened there? Why wasn't it reviewed uh, in time? You know, I really, I've tried to be very um, pro-law enforcement in this case, and I am very much pro-law enforcement. I do think that they are doing a good job. But one of the things that I did re read that was was slightly frustrating to me is that um, there was CCTV, as we know, there's a, a, a clerk at one of the convenience stores who, who came forward and said they had perhaps the Hyundai on CCTV. Um, however, uh, that CCTV was was recorded over um, after a week. It was recorded over um, after a week. It was recorded over um, after a week and that the footage was asked for about three to four weeks later and that the footage was asked for about three to four weeks later and that the footage was asked for about three to four weeks later. 
I'm very surprised um, because what I think law enforcement probably would have and should have done at that case was asked for footage of, of really anything along the transportation route of where those houses are. And then they can go back and sort of go through it. But they should have asked that all of it be preserved initially, even if they didn't have time to go through all of it. And we understand that law enforcement is completely overwhelmed by the sheer volume um, of, of evidence and footage and photos that they are going through. Does this perhaps indicate Kate, though, that some things may be falling through the cracks. You know, no one's perfect. Um, no entity is perfect. Uh, no human is perfect. And, and I do think this may have been a situation where something did slip through the cracks. Typically, you know, what we would do is immediately ask for it. And even if you are overwhelmed, which is completely understandable in this case, then you at least save it from being erased or, or, or recorded over so that you can come back to it when, when you are able to look through it. So yes, something like this very well may have slipped through the cracks, but I'm, I'm just speculating at this point. And right now there's dispute over how relevant the toxicology reports are in this case. What do you make of that? Yes, I thought that that was really interesting too. And I'm surprised that there's a dispute about it because in my opinion, we don't we don't have a suspect, right, in, in terms of what we know. And so I'm very surprised um, that they are perhaps deemed by some to be irrelevant because they really might go towards helping towards a motive, helping towards the state of mind of the victims. If the victims were incredibly intoxicated when this was happening, it might really go to show and completely rule out the other roommates and that maybe screams weren't happening, people weren't fighting back. Um, and so I I'm, I do think they are relevant, although I'm not sure that they're relevant at finding us a suspect. And, and what about the high-pitched sound that police body cams picked up? Do you think that those could have been screams? Can anything be made of the timing there? And does that warrant further investigation? You know, I think anything that's going around in that vicinity that's on any of those cameras that we're hearing or seeing will be relevant that happened at that time. It has to be. You can't rule it out um, immediately because of what we know happened. Um, I am on the fence in terms of what I think these may be. I, I do think they very well could be tires kind of speeding away. And if they are, that's interesting as well. Um, if someone is kind of peeling out of an area were they just involved in something that they shouldn't have been? And so even if they are the victim screams as well, then that kind of narrows you in closer uh, to the time of death. Former CIA officer and FBI special agent Tracy Walter, thank you as always. All right. So you all just got done watching the video. We just got done watching the video. When uh, I first watched this video, my jaw was on the floor uh, because I don't we haven't been able to find very many videos like this when it comes to mainstream media because this does not fit into the current narrative that we see. Um, this is so far left field. I I can't believe what just what, there's so many things said in that. I mean, so many things that are so alarming. I agree. <laughs> and the picture they're talking about right here. You know, it, it, we've done a full video. I think we've done a couple videos on that picture uh, talking about, you know, the fact of if it's real, if it's not, uh, what what it's all about. And it sounds like to me, based on what she said, they don't have that footage. There is none. It was recorded. It was re-recorded over in a week and police never asked for it till three to four weeks later. Exactly. That's she, insane. She said basically what they should have been doing was getting all of the camera footage along that route, period, even if they didn't have time to go through it. You just get as much footage as you can. I, and yes, 100%. That's absolutely seems kind of obvious have happened yeah i agree with you so why do you think that why do you think that's even brought up in like the pca you know how many videos have been made about this is where brian drove this is where this is where he was at this time this is where he was at that time they don't have that footage so like that picture that's it and it's another piece that's pointless now there is Nothing in that picture that could confirm anything. No, that's such an awful picture. It does not confirm it's Brian's car at all. Um, and on top of it, 
There's no footage to even see whose car that was. None. None. So it, is that a real picture? That or was, was a, that a troll? That was a red herring. You know, Nancy Grace literally says that picture cracked the case open on uh, her show. I, uh, I mean, maybe it led them to an incorrect suspect. Maybe it led them in a wrong direction. We have confirmation of at least three other white Hyundai Elantras. If you can even tell in that picture that it's an Elantra to begin with. But there are other people right in that area that have other Hyundai Elantras also. Hyundai? 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 Yeah. Hyundai? Yep. It's that serious. Hyundai? But, so, I, my jaw's on the floor with it. Absolutely on the floor with that. I had no idea that they lost footage. I, I don't ever recall anyone talking about that. Now, maybe it was talked about and it just out of all the other things that have been going on in this case, it got buried because it was so long ago. Um, but that's a big deal. I think it's a very big deal. I think that is evidence of exactly the concerns we've had with this. You know, we, we brought up this topic before and have talked about it before that there are some very big content creators out there that have very real background experience in law enforcement that are currently looking at this case and currently feeling like the investigation can't be trusted. Calling some, yeah, some of it into question, their competence. Yeah. Yeah. Especially involving the university and the investigation. Right, right. And you know what's interesting is the fact that we like to connect the FBI with this investigation, even though the FBI wasn't the law enforcement agency leading anything. They weren't making any decisions. They were essentially there as a support piece. They were there to... Uh, break down evidence that would be passed to them or that they have gathered. They were not making any of the key decisions in this case. Now, it in this situation, they they didn't come and attempt to get this, regardless what happened with the recording over. They didn't come attempt to get this evidence for three to four weeks. Three to four weeks, a month. We'll just call it what it is. They didn't come attempt to get visual evidence, a, a video evidence for a month. And we're supposed to trust this. I don't know about you guys. I have a hard time with it. I have such a hard time with it. And, and this, again, this has nothing to do with Brian's innocence or guilt it has to do with the fact that we have an investigation that we can't trust in. Possibly. So what, what would happen in this situation that we find out the evidence can't be trusted, right? All of this, there's flaws, there's mistakes. It's misleading. It's all over the place. Then it's been handed to the prosecutor, Bill Thompson, right? And we've talked about this in a previous video, how uncomfortable and how hard it is for prosecutors to navigate the waters of an investigation where they feel like uh, the police didn't do their job. Essentially, we'll just say that they didn't do their job because they talk about both fraudulence in there, lack of experience, mistakes, everything, you know, under the sun. Um, and how hard it is to move forward now times that by 10. Because the whole world's watching, and what would we see a prosecutor do? I don't know. I I mean, I think they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. I really do. And I'm talking about the prosecution. Yeah. yeah. I think that this situation is very easy to get out of control, get out of hand. And then all of a sudden they're like, Oh, what do we do now at this point? You can't take back what's been done. What's been said, what's been submitted, the charges that have been requested, the warrants that have been issued, the, the arrest, you can't take any of that back. Nope. You can't. 
I just can't believe they would wait that long to get that footage, especially since it was called in. Like you had a citizen call in and say, I have footage of what I think is the car that you're that could have been involved in this. They claimed they were video canvassing within like the first 24 hours. Right. Yeah. Video canvassing what areas then within that 24 hour period? Because that gas station is supposed to be like right on the corner as you go into that place. I, I know. You go into that neighborhood. Like that seems like an ideal place to be canvassing. Agreed. I agree with you. I agree with you. So when it comes to this footage, I mean, could this be the confirmation that, you know, makes every video out there that suggests they have figured out the route that he drove like null and void? This is a, a huge deal. This is law enforcement. This is an ex-CIA and FBI contact that is is confirming that. Now, I understand that's just a statement. So, like, would I bet my life on that information that we just heard? No, obviously not. In the same way that I wouldn't do it for any human being statement. Doesn't that also mess up the footage of the circling? Uh, yeah, I would think so. I'm curious. I'm, I'm really, really curious what other cameras they supposedly have and if they got to them on time. I am now two. I am now too, you know, and, and she goes on to say, like we saw watched, um, she supports law enforcement, right? She, she backs law enforcement, the same kind of stance we have, but when a mistake happens, the only route forward is calling that mistake, fixing it and moving on. Yeah. Being, being honest about it, um, being transparent about it and yeah. Fix trying to fix it as best you can, remedy it as best you can. Um, I mean, I just really hope that they truly did canvas the area very well and just somehow that one uh slipped through the cracks. Um, but when you see cracks, it means there's more to follow, usually. Um, yeah. and her another thing that really struck me in that video is her saying. There were supposedly screams on body camera. The Banfield, yep. Dude, if if I don't remember hearing screams in Banfield footage, do you? Yeah, yeah, I know what they're talking about. Um, who was it? Um, uh, gosh, I can't remember the creator right now. They did a breakdown on it. Uh, you know what? It was um, it it. Who's the creator that that we talk about um, that is questioning the investigation? What's his name? Chris McDonough. Yeah, Chris McDonough. I'm pretty sure it was Chris McDonough um, and his wife, and they were going through the Banfield footage, and he he cut it. He put it into software and cut it. And I'm sorry if I'm wrong, you guys. I, this is by memory, but I believe he cut the parts out that had the screech some people think it's a tire screech some people think it's a scream and it's there they're in two different spots so we'll we'll have to watch that footage if you guys are watching this now maybe we'll watch that footage on the true crime talk show after we're done with this video um but it's interesting i mean it's interesting for sure but to be fair that can also be anything right if it's a tire screech okay you're in a college town with a bunch of kids who have a massive amount of hormones and craziness and maybe drinking and partying and you hear tires screech. I mean, okay. You know what I mean? It's kind of interesting. It's around that time around the home though. It, it could be interesting that it's around that time around the house and at that time of the night and bushy eyebrow guy. Yeah, I mean, bushy eyebrow guy wouldn't be associated necessarily with that. Because unless he's, he's a lookout. Video, unless he's a lookout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if we're going to go, uh, you know, down, down the more tin hat topics, yeah, I think that I would ask the question of why wasn't this footage picked up on the gas station that somebody that would be the person that would do this crime would absolutely drive past more than likely to get to this house. Why wasn't this footage urgent? I would feel like 
in my opinion, that this would be a top three necessity when I'm looking to gather evidence of a crime, like priority, like you, you ask one of your officers, Hey, we got to call in about evidence. It's a video footage. We need you to go pick it up right now. Uh, call me in 20 minutes once you have it so I can make sure that we're good to go. Then let's get it back here and I will be here waiting for you. Then we'll go through it like urgent immediately right now. Right. I think I would be complaining that they didn't pick this up after 24 hours. Yeah, I'd be calling. One work day. I'd be calling and complaining for sure. I That's how urgent this is. So I don't understand how. We could have an investigation and people back it with 100% faith when you're seeing things like this. And remember, you guys, we are late to the table on this case. We were not watching this in the same fashion that we are now in 2022. So is this now information since they've arrested Brian Koberger that shouldn't be out there? Shouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Gosh. It's interesting, right? It's it really interesting. Now, if we're going to go down the 4chan path, because that was one of the topics I wanted to talk about tonight. So if we're going to connect this to 4chan, okay? So in some of the posts, they talked about the fact that they had a car but we're unable to get to that car. I think more than likely it, the walking distance is the safer option. We've talked about that endless amount of times, but not everyone who supposedly went on that four person walking trip or more to one, one, two, two that night uh, came from the Sigma, Hi, Sigma Chi house in that theory. So they would have had to have gotten there assuming a car. Right. Mm -hmm. So you would think that they would drive past that gas station, right? Yeah, probably. So then why would that footage not be picked up? I'm really curious um, how many times the gas station attendant thought this car passed by the gas station. If they did see evidence of circling. And that's what caught their attention or like what caught their attention about this one card to make them identify it and think that it had significance in the case and take a picture of that car because uh, three to four weeks later, they called what a weekend. Okay. I see where you're going. So now. The, it I wasn't got announced yet that they were looking for a Hyundai Elantra. I, I got you. Um, so, so why is this important? Why would that clerk look at this footage and be like, oh, this right here to take that picture? Because that photo is a picture of a screen. So someone's taking their phone, taking a picture of a screen. How did that clerk know to take a picture of the white Elantra on the screen? Interesting. And just go figure that footage is lost. So what if this is a picture that broke the case open? Go figure the picture is a lot or the actual video of it's lost. And it's, I mean, that's, I guess I'm going really tin hat, but I'm just thinking, is it a setup? Like how convenient the footage is gone and it's the most horrific, you know, fake looking picture. Like it's such a weird picture and they come out and announce we're looking for a Hyundai Elantra. Yeah. And that's the only picture the public got. And you just said that Nancy Grace was saying that that's the picture that broke the case. She so, is saying that. To the state, she says that. That's really interesting. That is really interesting. So, could this picture be step one in the investigation connecting Brian Koberger? Were they at a point? Was the investigation at a point where do, do you remember seeing how many articles and statements and everything that was coming out like three weeks after the crime happened? How hard the media and, and the public was on the cops, like oh. literally calling them out. Oh, what the are you guys members. doing? Oh, what yeah. is going on here? 
are, are, can you even be trusted? Should we be doing our own investigation? Could this footage and or photo be where the cops decided like, Hey, we need to find this person. We don't, we need an arrest. So what I, so I think, yeah, the, in the, in the beginning of this case, literally the first month, the families, like the families were freaking out. Okay. The Gonzalez family were so mad, so mad. Rightfully they didn't have so. any confidence in the police. They, um, hired a PI, uh, the media was going pretty hard. Um, you know, the questions they would ask in the press conferences, you could tell none of them had faith in what was going on. Um, you know, they came out and said it was a targeted attack. Oh, never mind. It's not, uh, the public's not, you know, in danger. Uh, never mind. We can't really say that. Um, you know, they just kept making these statements we're not and then walking say you're them in back. Danger, but we're not going to say you're not. Yeah, it was, it was weird. I, I agree. All of it was weird and they weren't getting anywhere. There's been weirdness, like all the victims' cars towed out of there and then sit in a parking lot that's not guarded, not fenced. Anybody can walk up to them and get into them. Like, so many, like, just not, it didn't look professional. Like, the way they moved the victim's stuff out, you know. agree. All of it. None of it seemed professional. None of it seemed like they knew what they were doing. And then when the PCA came out, all of a sudden the media narrative just switched. And everybody is sitting here. The true crime community is like, wait a minute. All of a sudden you have faith in the investigation. And all of a sudden you're just believing the cops. Yeah. And remember. Because it's a good PCA. Literally every media personality, you know, came out and was like, this PCA is so juicy. It's got so much information. They really did a great job. Yeah. And it's super important it's really to remember weird. that we we've made this comment now a couple times over the last couple weeks. Like, look, it's important to remember this it is. I am not putting anybody down. OK, nobody, not Nancy Grace, Coffin Daffer, uh, Banfield, any of them. I'm not putting them down. OK, but one of their techniques to get information to have the trust of law enforcement is to always back them. The arrest happened, right? So whatever is going to come out in mainstream media post arrest, nothing's going to change that. They could, they could literally run with any story. It doesn't matter. And it's not going to change the fact they have an arrest. They have a suspect, but what could change that is if you're coming out and openly putting down the police you are openly talking trash about the investigation and the job they're doing. Do you expect those law enforcement officers to offer up information, to be on your good side, to allow you to be present, to, you know, let you stand on the court sidewalk and uh, record your newscast? Like, there's benefit there to have these cops on your side. Yes, there absolutely is. And I think that is very important to remember. And I think that is the exact reason there is so much interest in YouTube content creators around this. You know, we just had Cyber Sleuths come out not that long ago. Um, it's a thriving industry on YouTube. Full-blown industry on YouTube and other social media platforms. And I think that could partially be why. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. People see these things. They see mainstream media on, you know, this day be like, what the heck's going on with the cops? What we can't trust in the cops that who knows if anyone's safe here, what's this going to do to the college numbers? What's this doing to the families? Shame on you, police officers. And then the very next day, they're like, yes, those cop, man, they were geniuses. Let me tell you, we thought they were crazy, but they're actually geniuses and knew the perfect step every single time. All hail the police. You know what I mean? And people see that. Come on. Yeah, they absolutely do see it. Um I think that the glaring issues we saw throughout the investigation 
are very real. And I don't think coming out with, um, I think that's why the PCA, they wanted to get it out so badly. Um, they weren't hiding this PCA. It was something they could not wait yeah. to release to the You're public. Right. Um, because it was, uh, I'm assuming that's what they were counting on. Is it literally shifting that media narrative to them all being the heroes? Um, and if this all turns out in the best case scenario, then they will be. Um, but if, uh, it turns out there's as many glaring holes as it appears to be. And Ann Taylor is a let like literally implying there is, um, we're going to have some serious problems. We are going to have serious if problems. If it's true that Koberger was on a watch list in Pennsylvania and was dangerous and they knew it ahead of time. So this is something, major problem. This is something we talked about during one of the breaking news story. I'll give you guys the, the update. Somebody reached out via email and said, Hey, I, I want to let you know I'm not under the gag order or anything like that. Uh, I'm still pending additional responses, things like that. But they're saying that, uh, local law enforcement, the college was even alerted, WSU, um, that Brian Koberger was being watched because of certain things being posted, certain things being done online, like they were aware of him and they could have prevented this crime. And that's really what the secret, the gag order, the uh, hiding things, that's what it's all about. And they're worried about that. Now, wouldn't that be interesting well and for that footage right and that said in the steve g you know brat no well, not not in that detail no, he just says he that says they were watching him they in were watching him in pennsylvania yes i, I kind of took that text message though as watching him in pa from the time he got there with his parents no that's it actually no that's not what it says it says before the crime Okay, I need to go back and, and double check. I know myself. that for a fact. I'm not doubting you. I just want to see the conversation that was before because obviously I don't have all these text messages memorized or anything like that. But uh, if that could be the real outcome in this situation, that makes sense too. And again, it's going to look bad on the cops. There is no way out of this, in my opinion, based on the mistakes that we've seen in this PCA that law enforcement isn't going to be bruised in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Yeah. There's major flaws in the PCA and I'm not sure why so many people, um, uphold it. Like it's a great piece of, uh, of work, but it's, it's not, it's really, really not. There's things in it that don't add up. There's things in it that make no sense. There's things in it that we have looked at time and time again, um, they obfuscate like, like the DNA, like I, I heard somebody literally praising it because of the DNA on a past video that I rewatched today. And I'm thinking it literally has one sentence about the DNA. It's a single sentence. That is not rich in information. It doesn't mention the IgG. It doesn't mention even really the type of DNA or how they got it or who got it. It doesn't mention Othram. Like there's so many things and they're missing about the DNA. Uh, everything. It's just like, yeah, we found it on the sheath. Yeah. Yeah, I know. E everything's missing. Everything's missing when it comes to all the evidence. So. When we're looking at the PCA, like it, when I read the PCA, do I feel like that's a good enough PCA to get an arrest? I mean, maybe when you're looking at it from a good faith perspective. And I think yes. that's one thing that a lot of people need to understand that like there is good faith and there is bad faith in our judicial system. When a judge is being approached to sign this warrant of arrest, um, they take the evidence at face value and good faith accept that they are submitting truth in most cases, which I get is I, I think that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, right? A law enforcement officer was put in their position and entrusted to be good faith until proven not to be. So like, I get that. I understand all of that. But when you actually dig into the PCA, there are glaring holes and it's interesting again this is a law enforcement officer in that video cia agent so it, it, in 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 my assessment of law enforcement there's like 
local law enforcement here and like FBI, CIA up here because of the amount of training they go through. I've heard in order to be in the CIA, the training program is like nine months. I, I need to triple check that. I think it, the training varies from position to position, but I think the base level training is like nine months or something Jeez. crazy like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, lost footage. How many, uh, of you guys knew that there was <clears throat> lost footage in this case? I thought it was the interviews. I thought they lost interview footage. I had never heard that they lost the gas station footage that is constantly talked about when trying to portray and give an outline of his direction of travel. Yeah, that's pretty big deal. Um, Cause this isn't the first time we've heard of lost things in this case either. You know, what's interesting is Supposedly, there's evidence of the white Hyundai Elantra driving around, right? Mm -hmm. Emma Bailey had a white Hyundai Elantra, and Emma Bailey's house yep. is right where you would see that car driving. It's in the area. Three-point turn, turn around. Could someone have left that house? Been like, oh, I can't believe I forgot this. Let me go back and grab it. You know what I mean? Like, there are so many possibilities. I mean, she would have no so need many. to pull into the, the King Road, Queen Road neighborhood, though, because it doesn't go back to her house. I thought you had to pull up there to go back. You No, there's no she has no reason to pull okay, into that neighborhood. Then, then she would I'm have mistaken. to I'm she mistaken. would have to be. I mean, it, she it could still be caught on camera in the places they say Brian was, though. Like okay. Walenta Drive yeah. and all those places. Sure. Um, however, she wouldn't need to pull into the King Queen Road neighborhood at all, right. all to go home or at all. And that's just a question. I'm not trying to assume guilt there or something like no, that. No, like just it trying could to be innocuous. How. It could be yeah, they think exactly. it's Koberger, but it's actually somebody who literally lives in the area or yeah. something is what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, it, did you find anything else wild in that statement. The other thing is um, a death row inmate, Idaho death row inmate says that he gave a statement that the person that did this was waiting in the house. Yeah. Why didn't they name the inmate? That's kind of weird. And yeah, that was interesting. Um, he said he thought they'd be waiting in the house for them. And then she was like, but it seems like she really thought this was somebody they knew, though, which um, is interesting. She both of those could be true. Both of them could be true. But she essentially said if they knew them, that would be less likely for it to be true because you wouldn't be as alarmed by somebody you knew and letting them in your house and all. that. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yes. Yes. I when she said that, I thought she was talking more about understanding the layout of the home. But we have always wondered. If if there was somebody there waiting in yeah. the closet yeah. and that's how they got them. We have wondered if the two crimes happened at different times. And that is why there is no track of BLOD in the house. Because they were, yeah, they were up there with the girls for a long time, a lot longer than anyone realized. Yes. Exactly. Because if you think about it, in Dylan's statement from the PCA, you hear mention of the dog, not her ever hearing the girl specifically. You hear commotion with the dog and somebody she thinks could be Kaylee saying somebody's here, but could have been Xana. She recognizes it could have been Xana saying that. So what if... This person was lying in wait upstairs, was up there, you know, hurt, harmed the girls, um, you know, put the dog in the room or whatever, whatever happened with the dog. And then Xana hears somebody upstairs and is like, oh, my gosh, Ethan, somebody's here. And then that happens to them. And that's why we don't see it because they already clean themselves up up there. Who knows what else they did up there? Yeah. Um, but, you know, one other interesting thing uh, is they didn't 
forensically test the dog. I I know, I know. I think we shared that, or did did I share? We that haven't with talked you? about that. Okay, okay, yeah. So because that's a really big deal. Uh, anything else from what we learned today that you think we need to know? Yeah, what you said about the dog is interesting. A lot of people have been interested um, in, in this Golden Doodle Murphy. Is it possible that he was in the room, that he had evidence on him because he immediately went to the Humane Society? People were concerned that the, he might not have been tested because he immediately went to the Humane Society. People were concerned that the, he might not have been tested because he immediately went to the Humane Society. People were concerned that the, he might not have been tested. Now we learn today uh, that he was not in in the crimes, in the part of the house where the crimes were committed, part of the house where the crimes were committed, part of the house where the crimes were committed, uh, according to the police. It's a very big deal. And, and I mean, we can talk about that in here. I mean, essentially, we're talking about the possibility of police not doing the right thing. And we're questioning that and we're giving evidence with that. So, number one, gotta- lost footage. Number two, uh, and, and I think I can clip that in here, too. But uh, it is stated by Brian Enton in person that this dog was gathered right away and sent to a shelter right away. Meaning he was never forensically tested. Never. How could they do that? This dog was shut in the bedroom. How do you know the killer didn't do that? How do you know the killer didn't pet the dog? I don't on it. It blows me away. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't get it. I I am absolutely and totally blown away. And that goes back to our 113 pieces of evidence where we were breaking down the crime scene and the fact that they wrapped only the house, the, the physical house itself with crime tape initially cars, people, everybody there. And then once uh, later, hours later, hours later, they extended that crime scene tape out to include the entire area of the home. So that's a major mistake. Um, These guys just weren't equipped for this. They were not equipped. They didn't have what they needed to manage a crime scene of this magnitude. They didn't have they the didn't knowledge have or experience. Agree. They didn't know what they were doing. I agree. I agree 100%. So why, why did they keep Brett Payne as the decision maker and, and Moscow PD, the leader on this investigation? I don't understand. I don't get it. And that it is just mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. And now to find this, you know, it is mind blowing, but not surprising. Yeah. So, so that's footage. That's what else was the other issue? What? Uh, With the interview. So it is the, uh, yeah. Losing the footage. Um, the the main thing is uh or that we were just talking about is the interview with the death row person and then the uh the screeching and or screaming on the banfield footage the dog not being forensically tested yeah yeah like i feel like we could compile a really strong list of reasons to question the investigation like off the top of my head right now Lost footage, dog not forensically tested. Mm. They they uh they taped off the crime scene only around the home, not the property or the whole block. Mm. Them touching a jacket that was laying on the side of the street of the sidewalk, and then threw it back down like it was trash. They didn't bag it and tag it right there. Okay, the glove on the sidewalk. I know that was found by Chris McDonough. Yeah. Yeah. Like those are five major things that are make me really worried for the investigation. Yeah. And also what she said on there uh, at the very end was the, the toxicology and why law enforcement wasn't putting an importance into it when dude, I think, look, a lot of people in true crime community are not, uh, you like privately trained uh, investigators or or in law enforcement uh, 
classes, anything like that where you're where you're actually trained through a program. Most of us are self-taught. And I would say 95% of people in the true crime community saw that as a problem. What do you mean it doesn't matter what's in their toxicology? What do you mean that you're not looking to see if potentially they could have been drugged and that's why they were able to be taken advantage of. What do you mean that you're not looking for any of these connections to other locals in the area that, hey, we found this type of drug in their sim in their system and th these people in this area sell this. So let's start talking to connections. What do you mean? Yeah, saying the toxicology report isn't, isn't important is absurd. Um, it's absolutely absurd. Now, I would also like to point out that's not true. There's no way that could be true. That's not true. The toxicology report does matter and it wasn't clean like they say it was. No. It's not possible for them to have came back with nothing in their systems. Right. Every single one of them was out partying that night. Every single one of them smokes pot. Every single one of them drinks alcohol and God knows I don't what know else. If they all smoke pot though. Cause I, I, I didn't, I didn't. I know what? there, there are statements that there's uh, statements from family members saying yeah, that they all smoked pot. No, I, I get that. I hear you. I, I just want to remain objective that we don't have any evidence that can, we, we can say in concrete 100% they all smoke pot. Um, but there's very clear evidence about the alcohol. Okay, there's and very clear important. objective evidence that they all drink alcohol, and there's very clear evidence from uh, Kaylee's family that she actively smoked pot and yeah. Zana. Now, yeah. Ethan, not 100% sure. Maddie, not 100% sure, but it, it's pretty likely. Um, yeah, and I there's agree it's many likely. videos um, that have been posted around the internet. Um, that show actually the Sigma Chi fraternity. I think it's actually Jen on Twitter. Um, she's a viewer of our channel that posted videos of them having like ba huge bags of mushrooms and weed and all kinds of other stuff. So yep. not surprising. Not surprising yep. because this is a way of life in college and especially fraternities. Agreed. Yep. Especially a social fraternity like Sigma Chi. It's not an academic fraternity. It is a social one that is yep. for partying. Yeah. And uh, I, th I think we pretty much covered it. This was a completely unplanned topic, but I, I personally, like I was telling you guys, my jaw was on the floor when I watched Dude, that. I can't believe that. I had no idea they lost that footage. I've been thinking this whole time that they had it. I agreed. And I, I, I was agreed. so curious what it looked like because that picture was so weird. And that's why we're talking about it right now, because I think it's that important because it doesn't make sense. Things aren't adding up. If there's anything in specific you want us to dig more into, like I'm really curious about these screams now. I want to go watch the, the breakdown of it and the dog. Um, definitely let us know because I'm I I don't even know what to think about this at Me this neither. point. Me neither. But I want to know what your questions are, you guys. I want to know how you feel about it. I want to know what some other evidence is out there uh, of there being major question marks with the investigation because. You know, it, I feel like you can close your eyes and throw, you know, a dart or something and you're you're going to hit where a mistake. You're going to hit a occurred. crack. Yeah, every time. Um, but uh, let me know what you think. And let those thoughts riot.